Good afternoon, Players Network shareholders, friends, and family. Hope you're having an amazing Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we're having a good one here, uh, coming off of some amazing uh, events and milestones of the company over the last uh, week. And uh, we're getting ready to chill down a little bit tomorrow and then take a few days off in the holiday. Hope you're all doing the same and planning on spending some great time with your friends and family. Um, I got a whole bunch of things to talk about, but I'm going to keep it really kind of uh, top level because this is a holiday week here. Um, yesterday we put out our 10Q, got tons of responses and people asking questions. And, um, and so I kind of want to address that. I have a whole bunch of things I want to address. I want to start with the 10Q. Um, why didn't we book more revenue? There was no real reason to book revenue over the last quarter of anything substantial. You have to realize the company is getting up to critical mass. We're building a business, we're building an infrastructure. We had to bring in a, enough revenue to satisfy the state, satisfy the city, cover our licenses, pay our taxes. The, the, the revenue was really a trigger to get these amazing licenses, the recreational licenses, the medical licenses, in order to basically, you know, set the future of the company. These licenses are worth millions of dollars. Some people are paying upwards of $5 million per license is what they're trading at here in Nevada. Um, I don't have any quantifiable um, information. That's what people are talking about. That's what they're selling. Dispensaries as high as 10 million. So, um, you know, we're, you know, the licenses are valuable. We built an amazing building. We built an amazing team. We've been creating product, and you're going to see a lot of the product coming out in the fourth quarter. You will see a lot more revenues in the fourth quarter than you did in the third. But really, the revenues you're going to see are going to be, you know, toward the end of the first quarter next year and the beginning of the second quarter. Once these revenues start, they're going to become perpetual. So I kind of want to bring you through this a little bit. Um, in addition to the Q, uh, yes, there was a, a, a few small notes that were still cleaned up from the past. So the, the company is not out there getting a bunch of toxic notes. Some people say, well, I thought the notes were all clear. You know, yes, there's a few small ones there. Um, and notes aren't always necessarily a bad thing. It just, you just have to know who you're dealing with and, and who you're getting them from and whether that person's a, a real investor and real strategic. Um, so forget about the queue. Focus in on what we're doing next year. And next year, every Q you're going to see is going to keep getting better and better every year. Um, I'm going to go back to Greenleaf Farms and the revenue in a second, but I want to touch on Comcast. Um, we can't say a lot about the case because obviously we disclosed that this was a confidential set, uh, settlement. Um, it wasn't our choice to make it confidential. Um, I can tell you that. Um, this was a huge accomplishment for myself personally. This thing started in 2004. We built this amazing channel, created millions and millions of views on the Comcast platform, and we were kind of ahead of ourselves. We were ahead of ourselves in the industry. There wasn't proper ways to monetize it, and Comcast himself was kind of finding their way through, you know, how do we launch this new form of TV called Video On Demand? So, you know, we, we both recognize that, you know, it was a big learning thing. Um, the accomplishment of settling this thing and doing something what I think is very, very good for the future of the company, and that's going to allow us with resources in so many different ways to do things that a small company like this only would dream of. Um, it, it's just it's a personal accomplishment I'm really proud of. Um, we're going to follow this up next week, there's going to be a report that's going to come out. The report really is going to be who's Players Network as a media company? Who's our team? An amazing team of Andy Orgel and Michael Burke and other uh, people affiliated with us that are just media and advertising and programming experts that have legacies. And we're going to outline our entire kind of history, bring it through us as a media company and show us the future. Because a lot of people are saying, well, are you in marijuana in your media? But you really, we're really in both. You have to understand that anyone who has a marijuana company and trying to create a brand and trying to create a market, they need to have marketing and advertising and, and a plan in place. It just so happens to be because of our core expertise, we put the plan in place first. And 
now we're going to be distributing the product. Um, the analogy I can give it to, and most people may not realize this, if you go to the movies and you watch this $100 million movie they just made, more than likely they spent double the production budget on advertising, prints and advertising. So if they spent 100 on the movie, they spent 200 million. So our philosophy to put this engine in place is gonna make Greenleaf Farms very, very successful in addition to having Weed TV successful in its own right. Um, in September and October, we produce an amazing amount of content, about 340 different videos and TV show concepts. A lot of people said, where are these concepts? Where, why come we haven't seen them yet? Well, there's an editing process, there's a release process, there's marketing that goes behind it, there's the ability to take sponsors and connect the sponsors to the particular piece of content. This all takes time. There's a, there's a dozen, um, you know, approvals and negotiations and, you know, and things that people want to have sponsors and, you know, they can't necessarily move as fast as we can. So a lot of that's going to be rolling out that content over the next months and throughout the middle of next year with actually revenue connected to it and building a new audience. Um, a lot of the content that we had have people that are social media influencers, celebrities, a lot of these people have big following and part of their commitment is going to be to help market the content that they're connected to. Um, it's an amazing business plan. We have an amazing amount of technology. The technology eventually is going to transcend far beyond just weed TV. There's going to be other categories and partnerships that come down the road. We really want to get weed TV honed in first. And we're going to explain the entire business model to you when you do it and how that connects together with Greenleaf Farms. So I think you're going to find being a diversified holding company is really going to set us completely afar of any competition when it comes down to the, the, the marijuana space. Um, anyone who's really studying the marijuana space is gonna realize that it's a competitive landscape. The taxes are high, the regulations are high. Um, thank God we're in a place like Las Vegas, Nevada, where they're limiting the amount of people that get licenses and there's maximum millions and millions of people coming here. Um, so that's an advantage that we have for being in this market. I don't know, you know, how successful people are going to be in other markets that are highly competitive and that have hundreds of dispensaries and hundreds of cultivators. We only are going to have 120 when it's fully built out, um, which is going to kind of transition me into Greenleaf Farms. Um, Greenleaf Farms had an amazing opening night last Thursday. Even though we've been open since the end of June, that was on a small scale. That was really 300 square feet. It was really to build genetics, to get into compliance. All you in the state of Nevada required was one light and one and one plant, you know? And so when people say, how come we don't have revenue on cultivation? Well, it's really simple. We are proven out our genetics, proven out the best quality that we have, and very, you know, somatically kind of, moving these pragmatically moving these into growing environments where we can match up the best nutrients and the best lights for the best conditions even the best growers in the world people who have growing for decades can come to the desert and have a completely different experience in the strains and the things that worked for them in the past so we've got together some great minds and, and the products that are going to come out of greenleaf farms are going to be amazing uh, people are asking me certificate of occupancy. How long is that going to take? It took a long time before. Yes, it did, but that was a completely different thing. The state had to come in and look at our uh, standard operating uh, procedures or SOPs. Um, we had multiple inspections. We had multiple regulations. We there was a lot of compliance of getting agent cards and people that can actually work there. Now it's more of a rubber stamp where all that. 90% of that heavy lifting is done. All we're doing is adding a room. The room is going to be looked at the city of Las Vegas strictly from a building standpoint. Did we have all of our permits in place? Were, were the, was the power installed correctly? Uh, the mechanics, um, is, it, is it a sealed environment that has the proper security protocols for, you know, um, for secured access, some of the rules that, follow. Um, all that's done, if this wasn't Thanksgiving, 
uh, coming up here in the, the city of North Las Vegas is normally closed on a Friday. Now they're closed on a Thursday. So come Monday, we're going to be in there. We're going to say we're ready for an inspection. Hopefully they'll come out Tuesday or Wednesday within the next couple days. So we anticipate next week we're up and running. We already have 1,400 plants ready to move into those, those rooms there between these amazing grow tents and our open grow area. Um, plants take anywhere from 90 days to 120 days to fully grow, depending on the strain, depending on the growing method, whether we're doing short plants, tall plants. Um, that's not my expertise. That's going to be our teams. And, um, but in, you know, given a bracket by March, we should be harvest. Things should be curing lab tested. And by the end of March, early April, that's what I'm saying, end of first quarter, early second, we should start putting out about 110 to 125 pounds every single month on a perpetual basis. Currently, right now, Nevada, the market is $2,400 a pound wholesale. Um, it was as high as $3,000 a pound when it first started. It's been a little lower, but that's where it is. And it's going to be based on supply and demand. Now, remember, the Vegas market is just starting. I mean, it's in its infant stage. It's where Colorado was three years ago. So, you know, everyone says, are you missing the boat? Have you not opened yet? Blah, blah, blah. Well, they're adding another 62 licenses next year for dispensaries. And the only people that can apply for those licenses is a handful of companies like ourselves that are in compliance that have recreational and medical license, paid their taxes, and is ready to go. So, um, you know, um, we're positioned really, really well. Um, what else do I have to say about Greenleaf Farms? Uh, there's some amazing partnerships coming up that'll be announced. Um, so we're gonna, and uh, let me move on to Marijuana Accelerator. Two great press releases last week uh, disclosing our development that we're doing with Night Snacks. Um, we have more news coming out, amazing news for um, for the Marijuana Accelerator. It's going to either come out next week or the week after, but really a whole vision that brings this entire package together and is exactly why Brett and, um, and the team set up Marijuana Accelerator. I mean, it just... Um, I wish I can tell you now, but I can't. So you're going to have to wait. Um, the company's doing awesome. Uh, we probably expected a little bit more attention with our Comcast release this week, but you, they're already, as you notice, Comcast is looking to acquire Fox. And, you know, we're a small company. Of course, we get mixed up in the, uh, in the shuttle here. Um, I really want to thank all the letters of support I got from people. I got lots of emails and congratulations, and you guys are awesome. Um, we're gonna have long-term shareholders, people that are gonna be cheerleaders, that are gonna hang on to this and use it for retirement or paying their kids college. There's already been so many people that's made a lot of money because they started buying our stock when it was a sub-penny. And we think that it's gonna go a long way, really do. Uh, the people that are short-term, and flippers and just taking profits that's fine too but the people that are long term please keep the comments coming share players network greenleaf farms marijuana accelerator weed tv share all that with your friends and family um this thanksgiving um email us anytime encourage people to sign up to our newsletter and again we're going to keep you informed of what's going on but uh this year isn't even close to being over yet. There's so much amazing news coming. And next year is going to be our blockbuster year. So I think that we're positioned to be definitely one of the few top leading companies in this space because of our plan and our vertical integration. So again, thank you so much and have an amazing holiday. Take some time off. Stop going on message boards. Stop trading. Just enjoy your time with you and your family and be thankful. Um, for everything this year has brought you. Definitely we're thankful here at Players Network for all the wonderful success we've had and blessing this year. And uh, I'll talk to you guys after Thanksgiving and stay tuned for news.